you so in these questions what you're going to do is um it still involves fraction okay it still involves the um division and subtraction of powers but you also see that it's also coupled with the other law of indices which involves powers and what happens when it's outside the brackets okay so you're going to look okay how am i going to approach this question it's pretty crazy okay so that's question one question two okay so let's go with the first uh, one, of the, one of the first things that come up, come to you, right? So when you think about that, that three is on the outside, okay? And remembering that, that is going to affect everything that's in brackets. So it's not just going to affect this, but it's also going to affect that as well. Now, looking at that two, what is the power for that two? Okay, so it's going to be a one. You can't see it. Okay, then the next thing is, you're going to draw an arrow to tell yourself that it's going to multiply every other power. So it's going to multiply that power and this power. So let's do that. So 2 to the power of 1 times by 3 divided by m to the power of 2 times by 3. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. A lot of people end up writing 2 to the power of 1 plus 3 m to the power of 2 plus 3, okay? Because they hurry it up, and what they do is they do this in their head, okay? And that's completely wrong. Or they just go 2 to the power of 3, because there's no power there, and then they just add it. So I'd highly suggest you do this step, okay? So if this question was worth 2 marks, you'd get 1 mark for multiplying this power with all the other powers, and then the other mark is to then simplify it. So 2 to the power of 3, and then m to the power of 6. Okay, but generally, that is a one mark question. All right, so that is your answer for that question. This one's a bit crazy too, because it's also slightly different. The only difference is it's got a number there. Okay, but that still has a power. And what power does that have? A 1. What's this rule talking about? It's going to multiply every single power inside including what's at the bottom. So a lot of people even forget as a misconception and as a fault. They think you just have to multiply the numerator, the powers in the numerator section. You have to also multiply the powers in the denominator section. So then to expand that, you've got 4 to the power of 1 times 3, m to the power of 6 times 3, and then g to the power of 2 times 3. Divide that by f to the power of 5 times 3, and then x to the power of 2 times 3. Okay, so we're not actually done there yet. That will get you one mark. Now you've got to simplify it. So when you simplify this, it's going to be 4 to the power of 3, m to the power of 18, because 6 times 3 is 18, g to the power of 6. Divide that by f to the power of 15 and x to the power of 6. Okay, so could you then simplify 4 to the power of 3 as a number? Yeah, what this basically means is, and a lot of people go, oh yeah, that's 4 times 3. No, that's not actually 4 times 3. That means 4 to the power of 3, which means 4 times 4 times 4, which is equal to 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Okay, so basically your answer to be simplified is 64, m to the power of 18, g to the power of 6, f to the power of 15, x to the power of 6. And that's your answer. So that's how you do that question where you have division and you've also got a power that's going to affect everything that's in that. And you can see there it involves division. But as you can see, there's nothing that you can subtract because there's no common bases at the top and there's no common bases at the bottom. Okay, so that's that part.